I am so sorry this video has taken so long to make and that oh there's bikes outside nice and that all of my videos have taken forever to make as you can probably tell I'm still a little bit ill I was ill for two weeks straight and uh, yeah that really sucked I only intended to have one week off not like four. Anyway, up until switching to the Galaxy S21 Ultra, graciously provided by Vodafone UK, I'd been using my iPhone 12 mini. I absolutely love compact phones. I love the way they fit in the pocket, easy to use with one hand, and my hands aren't the biggest, so they are nice to have, and the iPhone 12 mini and 13 mini seem to be a dying breed. However, switching to this gargantuan smartphone was definitely a culture shock. But is it worth getting such a big phone for all those features for all that money? Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas. Thanks to Vodafone for providing today's subject feature subject. Subject matter is maybe what I was going for there. Without further ado, this is my Galaxy S21 Ultra review. Let's start off with pricing and availability. You can get these things for around £700 used, which isn't a bad price when you consider the rest of the new market. So the £700 phones may have a couple of marks on them, but if you're not fussed about that, you can save a lot of money. I mean, that's like a £500 pound saving, depending on which model you go for. These are on sites like eBay and Facebook Marketplace. I get a lot of questions asking where I get my smartphones that are a few years old. Of course, this one is not even a year old yet. And I always say eBay and the Facebook Marketplace, it kind of baffles me that that's not the obvious place to get stuff from, but maybe in different countries you don't have access to those services, so that's fair enough. For your money, so that's less than a Pixel 6 Pro, you're getting a lot of features. It cannot be overstated just how much phone you get for your money with these Ultra devices. They are some of the biggest, best performing, best photo taking, and best screen wielding smartphones of their given generation, and the S21 Ultra is no exception. This thing is absolutely huge, especially coming from an iPhone 12 mini. This thing is huge, this is like a phablet, what we used to call a phablet back in the day. Compared to my iPhone 12 mini, it is just gargantuan. However, compared to something like an iPhone 12 Pro Max, or 13 Pro Max now, they are going to look quite similar. Of course, they are slightly different form factors because the S21 Ultra is more curved and tapered where the iPhones are more squared off these days. So you will feel the difference there, mostly in the shape rather than the size. And once you add a case to those things, they just become ginormous. And I would recommend putting a case on a smartphone just because they cost so much money. But then at the end of the day, if you're spending that much money, you probably don't mind if your smartphone uh, is just bare naked because they are such nice things to hold. It's just me being the person I am. I would always put a case on it and a screen protector for sure. It kind of ruins the aesthetic, but there we go. The thin bezels and small punch hole aid in the device's elegant looks. The same can't be said for those domino camera bump things on the back. It looks decent in my opinion and the way it's moulded into the frame is quite nice, but I wouldn't call it particularly beautiful. The matte black colour I think looks fantastic. I'm not really drawn to the other colours however. And that screen? Well, Samsung flagships have been known for their incredible displays and this is no different. It's got a massive 6.8 inch Quad HD 120Hz dynamic AMOLED panel and the S21 Ultra is one of, if not the best, smartphones for consuming multimedia on the market right now. Whether you're gaming in high fidelity, watching YouTube videos, or even watching full films and documentaries, this thing just looks and feels absolutely stunning. Performance isn't a worry either. The Exynos 2112 or 16 gigs of RAM in this particular model performs admirably in pretty much everything you can throw at it. If you're paying mega bucks, you're likely going to want to be able to do anything on your phone, and this is kind of one of those. In Genshin Impact and Call of Duty Mobile, on this smartphone in particular, it did seem to struggle with the Exynos chipset. And that's because those Exynos chipsets are known for better CPU and not quite as good GPU. I've heard that the Snapdragon version is absolutely, there's, there's no problem with the GPU. But with this particular model, I did find it to underperform sometimes. However, for everything else, for pretty much every other game I tested, and for sort of things like taking photos, watching videos, multitasking, not a hiccup at all. It's fair to say that Samsung's software skin has come a long way from the woeful touch whiz, and One UI 3.1 on Android 11 is my favourite Android skin. It's clean looking, it's intuitive, it's featureful, and though it may contain ads, that does seem to be par for the course these days, which is not a good thing, but it's how it is. Is it right for a thousand pound plus smartphone to ship with ads? Absolutely not, but is it the way the industry's going? It feels like it, and it's something that we kind of have to put up with. 
unless we stop buying those smartphones and maybe they'll change their mind, but who's gonna stop buying flagship smartphones? As is the case for smartphones in 2021, the S21 Ultra has a huge battery. We're talking 5,000 milliamp hours with 25 watt fast charging and 15 watt wireless charging. Is it the fastest? No, not even for a mid-ranger. There are many Xiaomi and Realme smartphones with 33 or 65 watt charging, and they also come with a charger in the box. This one doesn't. However, I imagine most people, uh, people who are probably not watching these reviews, will probably use their standard brick that they have at home or get a cheap one off Amazon, like a 20 watt or something like that, which they'll be fine with. Battery life was not an issue whatsoever. Now, I didn't find it to be as good as some of the Huawei's and Xiaomi's that I've used with similar sized batteries and similar components inside. However, that is par for the course with Samsung's Exynos chipsets. They don't tend to get the best battery life, but there we are. It did get me through a full day every single time. I'm not the heaviest of users. Of course, I was reviewing the device, so I was testing games, taking photos, watching videos, that kind of thing. But I'm not a heavy gamer, so I'm not spending multiple hours a day gaming on my smartphone. And the same can go for video as well. Most of the time, I just scroll through Reddit and Twitter, which is only gonna take up an hour, if two hours maybe, of my day. I do have a, a full-time job, so I'm doing my job, if that makes sense. For those of you who are just lounging, uh, this thing might struggle a little bit with battery life and you might want to get something with like a 6000 plus but like I said this thing for most people should be fine. But now on to the main event. The thing that made me want to request this phone from Vodafone, the camera stack and oh boy what a camera stack it is. It's not just your typical one big main camera and then pour out accessory shooters. No we've got a 108 megapixel main, 12 megapixel ultra wide, 10 megapixel 3x optical and 10 megapixel 4x optical zoom. Throw in the 40 megapixel selfie shooter and you have one of the most well-rounded camera setups out there. There's no doubt that if you just want to point and shoot, this thing is up there with the iPhones and the pixels of the world. There's loads of dynamic range thanks in part to the hardware and the software. There's a fair amount of colour, maybe not too much, but enough to make the images pop. Detail is plentiful too and I happen to think that this thing nails exposure pretty much every time. The same can be said for the ultra wide and 3 times telephoto. Both do take amazing photos, if not quite as technically excellent as those from the main camera. I love having those extra perspectives, especially that 3 times optical, which equates to around 75 millimeters, a really nice focal length for portraits and stuff like that. But of course, the star of the show is the 10 times optical zoom. Apologies for saying four times before I messed up my words there. Up to around 30 times, the quality is relatively usable. It's only past that that you tend to get some proper artifacts. From the detail at great distances to the extra compression you get with a huge focal length like this, it's a really cool feature to have. Even if it can get a little spooky at times with how close up and personal you can get with one of these. A paparazzi's dream camera, I'm guessing? I don't take a ton of selfies, but the S21 selfie shooter did impress me with its ability to capture a lot of detail and a surprising amount of dynamic range from that tiny punch hole. The S21 Ultra's low light performance is great, it's up there with the best, but I wouldn't say that it takes the crown. So for four figures should you buy the smartphone? Probably if you're into that kind of thing and want all those features. But for £700, if you get one slightly battered, you're getting an unbelievable deal. You're getting so much smartphone for your money. They're saying at the moment that the iPhone 13 Pro Max, I say they because I don't have a 13 Pro Max. The 13 Pro Max is meant to be the best smartphone on the market at the moment, closely followed by the Pixel 6 Pro, but I don't have either of those in to compare this to. And I would say pretty confidently that this is, of all the phones I've tested, the best one I've ever tested. It's the most well-rounded, you know, it doesn't have the best camera, but it has a really good camera, so probably top three. It has the best screen for sure. The performance is good, more than good enough. The battery life, the same, more than good enough. The design is kind of polarizing. I don't happen to like it, but once I put a case on it, it'll be fine anyway. It's a really nice smartphone and it will keep you going for at least the next three years. So if you can pick one up cheap, it will last you a long time, as long as you take good care of it, because those sort of curved sides on the screen and I, I can just imagine that getting smashed and a pretty expensive replacement. So yeah, this gets a big thumbs up from me. Thank you to Vodafone for providing today's subject matter. I've really enjoyed reviewing this one. I've actually got 
reviews coming of the Fold 3 and the Flip 3 coming up very soon as well, thanks to Vodafone. I'm about to send those back. I've actually recorded most of the content for that, so that will be coming up soon. I've also got the iPhone 13 Pro, which is I've had in, which is crazy, because I probably sent that back a couple of weeks ago now, and that will be coming up soon as well. I've got the Garmin Fenix 6 Pro Solar, which is coming, and an electric bike, of all things. They're all coming up on the channel very soon. Thank you for your patience. I'm still getting over this illness, but we'll see how it goes. Thank you all so much for watching. Please do like, dislike, comment, and subscribe if you're new around here to never miss a video like this one. Also check out all my social medias in the video description. We will be having a few uploads come on flat 4K in the coming weeks as well, so those should be fun, including a road trip, which should be pretty awesome to watch. I want to thank my patrons for being continually supportive. You guys are awesome. I've been Ryan Thomas, and I'll catch you later. Peace.